Oh, the peace like a river, a peace from Christ, he says, that the world cannot give. So grateful for that peace. Good morning, I'm Eddie Bradford, senior pastor here at Norcross First United Methodist Church. So glad that you're with us on this, this third Sunday of Lent. Glad that you're a part of our, this sermon series that we're doing of the, the hope and the peace and the joy and the love of Easter. And today we're looking at the peace of Easter. Glad you'll be a part of that. A couple of announcements I want to, to bring to your attention. Uh, we are starting to offer online giving. And so it's just another additional way that you can give uh, to your church. Um, and so uh, information's on our website already. And so you can check that out if you'd like to uh, participate in that way of giving to your church. Uh, or you can call the church office and talk with, with uh, Nancy about that. But check that out. Also, today is Communion Sunday. And so we will be celebrating communion at the end of the service. So you can um, pause anytime you need to and get your elements of bread and of juice or whatever you may have there at the house as we celebrate this, this wonderful sacrament of the love and the sacrifice of Jesus. Uh, for those in the, the church on administrative council, uh, we have our first meeting of the year. That is tomorrow night uh, by Zoom. I'll be sending out an invite for that. And so be, be, be looking for that if you're on the administrative council. Uh, we need you to be there as we talk about what's happening here in the church. Next Sunday is Daylight Savings Time, and so you need to spring ahead. And so remember that, um, and that's important that you remember that, because starting next Sunday on the 14th, we will be having in-person worship in the sanctuary. Come, you got to be masked from seat to seat, is what we're saying, from your car seat to your pew seat, and then back pew seat to car seat. You need to be masked. Obviously, we'll do the social distancing. Everything will be clean and available for you to come and to worship in person. So that is next Sunday, 11 a.m. That's all we're going to be doing. Still do Zoom from, from, um, for Bible study, Sunday school classes. You might want to adjust those times so you can come in person. We will be offering it through online also. Uh, so it's time to come back. It's time to be back in, in the house of the Lord. And so I hope that you'll come, be a part of that, continue watching online as we try to present for you the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love of Easter. Let's talk about that peace of Easter this morning as we worship him together. Oh, 
on this third Sunday of Lent. Join me as we pray together. Great and mighty God, we give you thanks for this a new day, for this season that we're in. We thank you, God, that you have given to us this day to worship you, to, to celebrate you, to praise you. Yes, it's Sunday. Yes, that is our, our regular day, normal day of doing so together. But every day you give to us is an opportunity to us, for us to worship you and to, to serve you. And so I pray, Lord, that we do that in, in every way, in word, in action, the way we, we, we act, react, in, in speech and thought. May our lives be a, a living example of, of Christ in us. Lord, you know all that's happening in our lives. You know our prayers even before, before we speak, before we utter a sound. But you long for that relationship with us, and so we pray to you in trust and faithfulness, knowing that you hear us. So hear our prayers. We pray, Lord, for our church, our church family, any who are hurting or struggling in any way today. We pray, Lord, for those who are, are still fighting through illnesses, sicknesses, whether it be COVID-related or not. We pray for our nation, for this world, fighting against this pandemic. We're grateful, Lord, for the doctors, the nurses, the companies that are putting forth a vaccine. And we're trusting in you, God, that this is right. This is what we need to do. So guide our, our steps in that. We pray, Lord, for healing. We pray for hope, for peace, for joy, and for love. Lord, we ask that you would remind us of how important it is to be in prayer. We can come up here on Mondays and, and pray and be prayed for. And thank you for allowing our church to offer that to the community. We have an opportunity, Lord, to, to help and to feed those in our community. So help us to step up and to, to say, yes, here am I, Lord. Send me. God, you give us opportunities every day. May we not miss a one. Forgive us where we have. Forgive us where we have not served you fully. Forgive us where we have not been your people. But guide us as we celebrate you, celebrate Jesus and his life, his death, his resurrection today during communion. God, we have much to be thankful for. We praise you for a new day. We praise you for your love. We praise you that you love us so much that you gave us Jesus. Help us to follow his example. All this we ask, and we, we lift up, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and we pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture lesson comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, reading verses 15 through 17 and 25 through 27. Hear these words from Christ. He says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. God, open our hearts, our minds, our very souls to hear your message of peace to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as I mentioned earlier, today is the third Sunday of, of Lent. So we are well into this, this Lenten season as we continue this, this journey towards Jerusalem, this journey towards Good Friday. 
towards Easter Sunday. And so if you've given up something or added something for Lent, I sure hope it's going well for you. Or you're struggling some with it. And that's okay, too. This is a good reminder for us. So I hope your, your Lenten season is, is going well. I want to thank uh, Brenda Westmoreland for preaching last Sunday and for reminding us that God hears all of us who call on his name. And he's always present. You know, I, I appreciate Brenda so much. And she had a, the idea of doing our drive through prayer time. And so if, if you are in need of prayer, if you are in our area, a member of our church or not, if you just happen to be driving by on Mondays during Lent from 10 to 1, anytime during those three hours, we are offering prayer for you. So I hope that you'll come and be a part of that. Uh, but Brenda heads that up for us, and we're grateful for that. And her sermon last week reminded me and reminded us of just how present God is with his, with his people. Early on in this year, in one of our staff meetings, um, Sandra Hunter, our, our youth director and Christian education director, challenged the staff for the year ahead and challenged us to have like a key word or a key phrase. And, and her word is abide. And we read about how, how Jesus says that God abides in us. The world doesn't see him, but we know he's there. My word is presence. And I have been amazed at how many times the word presence being present with God, how that's come up in so many devotions that, that I read and so many things that I see and hear. It has been a good word for me and a good reminder because for me, being in God's presence gives me peace. Peace. Peace like a river that we heard in the opening song today. Peace of Easter. And that's what we're on here on this third Sunday of, of Lent. It's the second in our series of the hope, peace, joy, and love of Easter. But the peace of Easter is that, that, that peace that is beyond all understanding because where else do you see that kind of peace but through Christ and Christ alone? You know, usually when there is a, a lack of peace, there is an abundance of chaos. It's hard to have peace in the middle of, of, of chaos. Even in that song, Peace Like a River, I was talking to someone recently, and I thought that song has such a double side to it. I mean, it is very few things that are more peaceful than the soft trickle of a, of a river. You can hear it breaking over the rocks. You can, you can hear it lapping up against the, the shore at times. But have you ever seen a raging river? <laughs> There's not much peace in that. And so that just reminded me of how, how peace and chaos kind of rub right up against each other sometimes. But it is that, that abundance of chaos that, that causes us to be in an in a unpeaceful way. Peace within. A, a peace that Christ says can, can only come from him. That's the kind of peace that, that we as his followers need to tap into sometimes. We are, we are living in a, in a time, in a world, in a society where, where there seems to be more chaos than peace. So we have to find it in different ways in different places. My wife Sarah and I love to go, go camping, and, and last week we were able to do so. I did so for my study leave, and I thank you for your prayers, those that, that prayed as I was letting God speak to me about what sermons to come. And so for the next six months, God and I worked that out, and there were some peaceful moments of, of just sitting and looking at the lake and just enjoying the, the beauty that God has. At the same time, during the rain, our camper leaked. There went the peace. I had, can tell you there was no peaceful moment in that whatsoever. So that, that peace and chaos kind of right up against each other in the, in the midst of the peaceful and beauty all around me, I felt chaos, out of control, nothing I could do about it. And so I had to remind myself of the presence which is my word for this year. The peace of Easter gives that to us. And I know we're heading down to the, the road to Jerusalem with, with Jesus and remembering that through Scripture, knowing what he was going to, knowing that he willingly gave his life for us, knowing what happened to him on Good Friday. Good for us. Hard for him. And yet somewhere in that, in that, in that chaos, in, in that imbalance, I find peace. And I hope that you'll find that peace during, throughout this, this Lenten season. Jesus talks a lot about his amazing peace in, in John 14. 
especially in 25 through, through 27. He, first, he talks about the, the gift of the Holy Spirit and how he's going to ask his Father to give that to us. That's that extra amount of peace. And he says that the Holy Spirit really has, has two things that, that, that he does. He teaches us everything, and he reminds us of everything that Jesus said. So the Holy Spirit is pretty busy because if we still need to be taught things, which we do, and we need to be reminded of the ways of Jesus, he's pretty busy because we all need that from time to time. And Jesus says he's going to give that to us. But he had to die and go and be with God before that could happen. In that chaos, he brought peace. Then he says, peace I leave with you. He's talking to his disciples, and this is a couple of times now that he tried to explain to them what's going to happen to him, how he's going to be turned over uh, to the rulers, and how he's going to be beaten, he's going to die. So he's leaving them this reminder of what he's told them, but he's leaving them this, this moment of, of just stop, be still, and be peaceful, knowing that Christ is going to give us this gift. And he talks about his peace being totally different. This isn't the kind of peace that, that the world gives us. This isn't the kind of, of peace in the 60s and 70s we're talking about. It's talking about a deep, way within us, peacefulness that can only come from Christ that allows us, when chaos comes right against our peacefulness, we'll be okay. Because we have this, he abides in us, deep within our souls, deep within the, the very fabric of who we are and, and what we are for the Lord. So he talks a lot about, about his peace, and it is an amazing peace. Because on earth, peace can only go so far on our own. But for peace to happen, we can't say we, we need a, a peaceful nation and someone ought to do something about it. We have to do something about it. As Christians, as the church, as God's people, we've got to offer peace. In the early church, in the early traditions of, of, of church life, they had a moment called passing of the peace. We do the same thing here when we have that greet your neighbor time. That is a passing of the peace. The idea of that is to let everything else go. Not think about anything else, just where you are, what you're doing, worshiping and praising God, and saying to someone else, God be with you. God abide with you. May you be present with the Lord. That offers peace. And I can tell you when we have those moments and we're standing up here waiting for the service to continue, I feel bad having to tell you all, stop passing the peace so we can get on and do more worship because you love each other. And we want to pass that peace. You know, we talk about a lot of times those, those RIP moments, rest in peace. And we look at that as a way that only seems to happen when someone dies. But why can't we have peace now? Why do we have to rest in peace when our days are over? I think it's just like the don't send me flowers when I'm dead, send me flowers now. Well, we don't have to wait until someone's dead to say, ah, oh, they are now in peace. What about now? Why can't we have peace on earth today? Well, there's a lot of variables. There's a lot of reasons why. There's a lot of, of excuses, and there's a lot of blame to say, well, I can't be peaceful because this person or that person or this person cut me off in the, in the lane or we're well, not very peaceful when these things happen to me. But God says, remember, he's the one giving us the peace. It's a peace unlike any other thing, nothing that the world can give you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So we have that to tap into. We have that, that Holy Spirit to teach us and to remind us. But we also have this, this peacefulness that can only come from Christ that allows us when we see the possibility of chaos coming down the road, we can say, I, I, I got peace like a river in my soul. I got the peace of Easter. Within me. I have the peace of Christ that he gave to me as a gift to help me through. You may have something coming up today, tomorrow, this week that you already know of. How are you facing it? Are you doing so with the, the hope of Easter that we talked about a couple of weeks ago? Are, we, are, are you doing so with this, this peacefulness that, that we read about today? Peace many times is the calm after a storm. You know, after a storm comes through, we, we, we can stop and just sit in the, the midst of it. And, and just all of a sudden, we can hear the birds again. 
when a storm passes through and it's raging and it is chaos. And when that ends, all of a sudden it's a light breeze and, and the sun maybe comes back out again and you can just feel the, the comfort that that gives us. That peace after a storm, in so many ways, that's Christ in our life. You may be in a storm of life right now. You may have things going on around you that are totally out of your control and, and you don't know what to do. You don't know where to turn. As Christians, we do know. And Jesus even gives that to us more. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And I know I preached about this a couple weeks ago, but, but God won't let that go with me for some reason. There's that sense in this, do not let your hearts be troubled. We have a choice. We can let that happen or not. And we can't blame others. We can't say other people took my peace. Uh, you gave it away. So hold on to it. Hold on to that, that peace that passes all understanding that Jesus says. That's a peace that comes from him. I'd like to look around and, and think, wow, there's some, some real peace going on right now. It's that, that quietness when, when we're camping and, and it's quiet and it's early in the morning. And one thing I have discovered, rediscovered about camping is every single person that goes camping brings their dog with them. All it takes is one dog to start barking, there goes the peace. They're all saying good morning, hello, or stay away, whatever they're communicating. All of a sudden, I don't hear any birds, I don't hear anything else but dogs barking. So even in our peaceful moment, we have things that happen. You can get lost in the moment. When something snaps you out of it, nothing should snap you out of the peace that's within you because of Christ. And I know we're in a, still in a, in a pandemic world. And we know this is still around us. And, and many of you have gotten your vaccine shots, and that's wonderful. This is something I believe we're going to just have to deal with for forever, probably. But we're smarter now. We have a bit of a peace about us. And I know some of you still are a little concerned and might not want to come out yet. Totally get that. We know that, that people in this situation are kind of like traffic lights. You know, the red, the green, and the, and the yellow. There's some people like, nope. I am red, I'm not leaving, don't touch me, don't get near me. Other people are a little cautious, they're just taking it easy, and some people are just wide open. That's how we are. We're just like, what mask, and just flinging it around. So we're different, but what combines us, what connects us, is this peacefulness of Christ. So where's your peace? What is God saying to you today that, that says, be in this peaceful moment. And, and maybe for you, you really have to stop at the beginning of every day, get away from everybody in your household, go to your closet, your praying time, and just be. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be in peace. Peace be with you. And the response always is, and also with you. We pass this peace. But it can't just stop there. We can't just say, Peace be with you. And now let chaos continue. We've got to trust in that peace. We've we got to think about that when we have communion. We've got to remember what Christ did for us, what he continues to do for us on a daily basis. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. So whatever chaos that you're in right now, whatever chaotic moment that you're facing, know that the peace of Easter, the peace of Christ, overflows that, covers that with that, that peaceful river that flows deep within your soul. And I know we're going to get together and, and be back again next Sunday in person, and I know there's questions about that, and for some people it's maybe not a peaceful time because of the unknowns, but it's time. It's time we trust God and, and get out there a little bit more and, and trust that we're smarter now. We're mature adults. We know to, to wear masks, to not get in each other's face, to wash our hands. We know all those things. We also know about this peace. And it is a peace that's unlike anything the world can give, Jesus said. What part of your life needs to have more peace? Maybe it's in how you deal with family members, co-workers. Maybe it's how you, you, you associate with people that, that you see out in the world. Maybe it's a, a mindset, a heart set about people that are different than you, different color skin than you, different ideologies and, and, and thoughts, different political stances. Maybe even uh, just everyday life things that seem to take away your peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled. 
Do not let them be afraid, Jesus said. Where's the peace of Easter within you? Are you giving that to others? Are you passing the peace to people that need it? We're about to celebrate communion. And in this, we see and can feel and can experience the, the peace of Christ. I know it's just bread and just juice or whatever you may have there at the house. It's what it represents. Representing the love of Christ, the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love of Easter. So if you need to pause the, the, can, the, the video now to get your elements ready, I invite you to do so. But pray with me, if you would. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your gift of, of peace. We know, Lord, that that comes from you. That it is a gift that Jesus promised, just as he promised the Holy Spirit. Just as he promised that he would go to you and ask you and you would give to your people the gift of the Spirit, the gift of peace. So as we prepare our hearts and our, our very souls for this time of communion, God, I pray that you would allow us to have that, that gentle peace like a river. In the way that we treat others, the way that we look at others, in everyday aspects of our life. So God, bless us now. Show us the peaceful way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We know that when Jesus was having his final meal with his disciples, and they were in the upper room, and they had the, the meal set up, he took one of the loaves of bread that were on the table, and he, he broke it. And he lifted it towards his Father in heaven. And he asked him to bless it. Then he gave it to his disciples, his family, his friends, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which was given for you. In the same way, once the supper was over, he took one of the cups on the table, and he, he lifted it towards his Father in heaven, asked him to bless it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and drink. This is my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins, a new covenant of love and of peace. And he said, Every time you do this, Remember me. Let us pray. God bless these elements here and in our homes. But Lord, may they, may they be more than just bread and juice. May they serve as a constant reminder of your love and your sacrifice for us through Christ. Lord, bless every single person who's partaking in this communion service. May this bread and juice fill us with your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Body of Christ for you. The blood of Christ for you. Let us pray. God, thank you for inviting us to your table. Thank you for reminding us through your spirit the ways of Christ, the teachings of Christ, and the peace of Easter. Bless us as your children, as your people. Keep us safe. Show us the way of peace so we can show that to others. In Christ's name we pray.
peace on earth and let it begin with someone else. That's not what the song says. Let it begin with me. The peace that was meant to be. The peace of Christ that enters in and out of our lives like a river. The peace of Easter. I hope that you will show that peace to someone. I hope that you will experience that peace for yourself. Go the way of peace. Go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.